it's Sharon for Mad Paper Crush here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be doing a video today all about tip-ins. I love adding tip-ins to my journal and I think that they do so much for adding interest, design, color, almost anything you want into a journal. And they're also really fun because if you have a journal that's already made, it's a fun way to add additional pages to your journals, additional place to add pockets, additional place to, to actually do some journaling in if you use tippins. So today we're gonna talk all about tippins and you're gonna see what they are, where maybe it came from, and then we're going to make a bunch of tippins so that you have some ideas to get started for yourself. So let's go. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what a tip-in is. So I have a basic tip-in right here in my journal. And basically, it's a piece of paper that tips in to your journal. So this, the word tip-in, I believe came from the publishing world, where it was used to indicate that if you had a book that was already printed and they wanted to add like a map or something like that, that was printed on different paper and it sort of didn't, you know, go with how the book was already set up and printed out, they would print out the map or whatever it was, and then they would somehow tip it into the book so that it would be included with the book. So that's kind of where it came from. But I heard about it when I used to do scrapbooking. So as I was making different pages and stuff like that in my scrapbooks, they talked about doing tip-ins, which were basically these flips of paper that you could add to your scrapbook pages so that you could have some hidden journaling or something like that on them. And just so you know, that in the junk journaling world, they're not always called tip-ins. Sometimes they're called flips. Sometimes they're called, um, you know, just fold-outs or attachments or something like that. So tip-ins, when I'm talking about them, includes all of those things. So these things that you can tip into your journal to add some fun throughout your journal. So let's talk about some of the different types of tip-ins and also some of the different techniques that you can use to do your tip-ins. All right, so let's talk a little bit just about the different types of tip-ins. There are tip-ins that come right from the side here, just like you see on this one. There are tip-ins that may be tipped down. So this is kind of like a bottom tip in there. And then there are also ones that tip up. So we have one that tips up like that. So you can do a bunch of different kinds of tip-ins. And then you can also obviously use a bunch of different types of materials to make your tip-ins. So here we have a fabric tip-in that you can put into your journal. Here I have a vintage postcard that I used as a tip-in. This is just some scrap scrapbook paper that I had to make the sort of standard type of tip-in that I'm most familiar with. What else could we use? We can use tags for tip-ins. So these are great to just kind of, I mean, tags are a lot of times put into tuck spots or into pockets. So I think this is sort of a little surprise element if it's not sort of used in the standard way. And then let's see, I know I have another one in here somewhere. Well, oh, here it is. You can use an envelope as a tip-in. I think that's really fun because it sort of creates a hidden pocket for you to put things in. And then you can also use all different kinds of cards and ephemera. So this is a library card that I've used, but you could also use time cards, index cards, those kinds of things. So obviously you can use a ton of different things to make a tip in. You could even just use regular um, book pages if you wanted to. You could use um, playing cards if you wanted to. So look around and any type of old ephemera or something that you have will probably make a wonderful tip in. Right. Before we get started on making some of these, I just wanted to talk about the different techniques. So we talked about what types of things make a tip-in. Now let's talk about how you might put them in because there's a lot of different ways that you can put tip-ins into a journal as well. So you can see here, I've used ribbon and eyelets. So really just punched holes and string to make this top tip-in here. So that's, I think, really fun to do. And then for my envelope here, I used some fabric washi tape to make some tabs that I used for that one. And then for my next one, I used fabric as a hinge. So it just goes on the 
one side of the paper and whatever your tippin is, and it makes a hinge for your tippin. And then let's see if I can find my next one. So this one, oh, this one's first. Um, this one, I used washi tape as my tip-in technique. So it covers the whole edge of both the journal page and your tip-in, and it makes a fun little decorative edge to your paper for that one. And then for this one that was my bottom tip in here, I actually used a paper hinge. So I'll show you how to make one of those and you can see it doesn't even show on one side of your tip in, which I think is fun because then it's sort of, you know, a little surprise. You kind of think this is hanging out there and maybe it's gonna fall out of your journal, but because we have it hinged in, it's gonna be just fine. And then the last technique is shown right here. It's actually sewing. So you can sew things into your journal as well as it, you can sew fabric in, you could even sew paper in if you wanted to as a tip in for your journal. All right, so now let's go into detail and actually create some of these so that you can see how these techniques are done. All right, the last thing I wanna say before we get started is that this is certainly not exhaustive for tip ins. I'm sure that you can think of many other techniques to create tip-ins and also other things you could use for your tip-ins. This, I hope, is a wonderful starting point for you to get creative and make some tip-ins. And remember, there's no rules in junk journals. We just kind of have to start somewhere and then you make these techniques your own. So I hope that you'll try some of these and mix and match your techniques with your ephemera or different things that you wanna use as tip-ins. And I hope that you'll tag me if you do that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, enough about talking about it. Let's go ahead and make some of these tip-ins. So I hope that showing you a couple of them will be helpful for you to start using them in your own journals. So I'm gonna start making them in my little idea book here. So this is a journal that I had created to just put all my different ideas in. So I thought this would be a good place to put it, um, all these different ones that we're gonna be doing. All right, so the first one I'm going to do is an envelope. So I have this little envelope that I have printed out and cut out from a digital kit of mine um, called Atlas. And for this one, I'm going to use fabric tabs. Now, these little fabric washi tape pieces are from Tim Holtz, um, but you could also use, you know, your own fabric washi tape. So I've made some in the past. You just take fabric and you use a double-sided tape on the back side of the fabric to create kind of the same thing. So that's what you can use if you'd like to use fabric washi. And now the reason I like to use fabric washies for things is so that it doesn't get in the way of other things, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use two tabs on the inside and two tabs on the outside. Now, hopefully it won't take me forever to get the paper <laughs> backing off of here. There we go, look at that. And now what you wanna do, so you can start with it in the, you know, I want this tip in to go this way. That's kind of what I'm going to do here. And I want it to line up basically with the edge of the paper. So you put it where you want it, in the direction that you want it. And I'm gonna start on the outside. So I want one tab maybe right here, and I'm just going to fold it over so that it goes to the other side of the page. And now you could just use two tabs with this, but the reason I do four is that, now you see this one's not gonna work as easy, of course. Of course, so oh, there we go. Ugh. Okay, so let me just put this one on and I'll show you why I like to use four tabs when I'm doing something like this. And now I'm just gonna try to make it about even on this other side there like that. So now you could stop here if you wanted to, but the reason I like to use four tabs is because when you open this up, you have little sticky <laughs> pieces right here. So then what I'll do here is I will just add the other two tabs basically in the same place on the other side to make sure that there's no sticky places. You don't want something, and this is a very small area, you really probably could get away without doing this this way um, because this will also add a little bit of bulk just so you're aware. It might make it a little bit harder to fold. So, um, you know, if you don't want that, like I said, you certainly don't need to add these extra tabs 
on the inside if you don't want to. And you could just do them on the inside and not have them on the outside, whichever works for you. So it'll take a little bit of, you know, creasing to kind of hold these down, especially since I have the two on the inside there. But once that, once this gets creased, this will be a perfect little tip in right here. And then you have like almost like a hidden pocket right there for that one. All right, let's try another one. Right, next up, we're just going to use some scrapbook paper. So oftentimes in your journals, you kind of have some relatively plain papers. And if you don't want to take up more space, so this is great journaling space on these pages, sometimes a tip in can just help give that page more pattern and texture and um, interest, I guess we should say. So this tip in is just a scrap piece of paper that I have but I love how the browns kind of all go together here and what I've done is I've cut it down to match the height of the page here so you could do it a different size but I wanted to just show you kind of what this might look like um, we'll be doing some of the other ones that are different size pages like the envelope was you know not the size of the page but this is also a fun way to make a tip in and this is probably the way I remember the most from when from my scrapbooking days when I used to do scrapbooking type things. Now, sometimes um, when your journal isn't bound is the best time to do this, but I like this technique because you can do it without the journal being bound. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna turn this a little bit this way. Let me see if I can kind of move this out of the way. Actually, I'm just gonna do this for a second. Whoops. All right, we're gonna close it for a second so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the inside of the tip-in. This is the side of the tip-in that I want the tape on. So I've picked out some washi tape that I like that um, I want to go with it. And I like to line up my paper on my grid here just to kind of be sure I'm putting the tape down even on both sides. So this washi tape is uh, a little bit, looks like it's about three quarters of an inch. So um, it's not gonna be exact for sure, but I'm going to make my washi tape a little bit bigger on both sides of the paper before I tear it apart. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some glue. Now you don't have to do this if you are using washi tape that has really good adhesive on the back side. but if you don't, if you're using just a standard washi tape, they're kind of made to not be real, real sticky. And I feel like I don't, you know, I wanna be sure my um, tip in doesn't fall apart. So that's why I'm kind of doing it this way. So what I'm gonna do now, is now that I move that away, I'm going to line this up again. And I'm going to come in and put this as close to halfway as I can. At least I'm going to try to make it even on, um, you know, both sides. So now I'm only pressing down on the paper here because obviously our glue is on the other side and we want to put that in the notebook. So now I'm gonna open up my journal again. And let's put this back this way, which is the way I think I wanted it. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line up the back side of my tip in with the paper and then very carefully fold it over so that it's nice and wrapped around. And you'll have to forgive me my, I'm trying not to get things in the way here. And so you can see I didn't quite do it halfway, not exactly, and it looks like it's a little uneven too, but you can't tell too much, I don't think. But now that I have my washi tape on there, I'll just take my scissors and cut off the ends. Now, the other thing that I like to do when I get to this point with a tip in, let me just cut this off here, maybe. is once again, when you open it up, I mean, this looks, you know, kind of loosey goosey here. So the other thing that you can do is then you can line this side with your washi tape too. And once again, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. And now if you want your ends to be cut ends, um, you can cut them straight across. Um, if you know me, I'm not exactly that type of perfectionist, although I guess about some things I am. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna lay this down. Once again, I'm gonna try to get as close to even as I can. And now when I flip this over, you can see that, whoops, 
I'm just gonna flip this over on this side and flip this over on this side. And now it's the tape is all around both sides of my tip-in. So, and I love doing a washi tape one like this because when you close your journal, you can kind of see those, that color or whatever the washi tape is kind of peeking out at you. So I love doing um, tip-ins with washi tape there. All right, next up, I grabbed a postcard, a vintage postcard that I have. I think these are from the 70s. I have a whole giant box of them, which I love. And I picked just a piece of scrap paper that I had that sort of matches something in there, but you certainly don't have to have something like that at all. So what I'm gonna do is I, I've decided that I want this one to flip a little bit differently. So most of them I've you know put on the side of the page so that they'd be totally hidden by the... Um, you know, when you close the book up. But this one, I think I'm gonna have it stick out and I think it's going to be a bottom tip in. So what I wanna do now, I, you can see my tip in here when I make this, it's going to go past the end of the page. And I want that to be the case for me this time, but certainly you could cut this down or if you had ephemera that you know wasn't as wide, you could you know do the same thing with that as well. Now, the thing to remember when doing something like this is that this doing a, a bottom tip in, this part is right side up. And when I tip it in, obviously this is gonna be upside down. So, but I think that's, you know, just all the more fun. So what I'm gonna do with this one, the technique I'm going to use is I'm going to make a hinge with this piece of paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the hinge just a little bit smaller than the width of the paper. And I'm just making this kind of eyeballing this. And this actually is pretty wide. I think I'm gonna cut this down a little bit too. And for this one, I am gonna use my cutter because that's kind of a long cut for me to make um, just eyeballing. I'm not that good. Okay, and so I want my hinge to be just about an inch wide. So this is about an inch wide. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this with the side that I want, so the side of the paper that I want to be shown when the um, tip in folds open, I'm going to fold that to the inside. So you can see here, I have, this is the side that I want shown and it's going to be to the inside. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do to this hinge, just to make it look a little fun, you could, you know, add any kind of, you know, decorative thing that you wanted to, but I'm going to add these little um, kind of angled corners here like that. So this is my hinge that I'm going to use. And now to put this on, it's just a little two-step process here. I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put it on one side of the paper. Try to get to the edges the best you can because obviously we want that to hold. And obviously you would use a hinge for something like this where I don't mind if some of whatever I'm you know, making my tip in is covered up. So if you had something very decorative on here, you might not wanna put a hinge you know, on there to hide some of this if you know, th that's your decision, obviously. Okay, so once you have that side of the hinge on, then we're gonna put the other side of the hinge on. And actually, I think I need to move this down because if you remember, this is gonna hang out the edge and I need to be sure that it goes, um, doesn't my, I don't want my hinge hanging over the edge. That makes sense. Okay, so now I have some glue on the other side and then I'm just going to line it up with the bottom of the page. And once again, I'm going to check to be my, sure my hinge isn't sticking out of the side there, which it's not. But now when you close the book, my tip in itself will be sticking out, but that's okay, I kind of like that. Move that out of the way, give that a minute to dry. But then this creates a fun little tip out this way, just like that. So I think, I don't know if I have this lined up exactly right. It shouldn't be hitting that too much there. I don't think my hinge is close enough to the edge. It's kind of hard to see with all these other papers in there. There we go, I think that's a little better. But then obviously you wanna, you wanna let this dry but there's a bottom tip in. So I love the way that looks. And I think this is fun because this looks kind of like a castle <laughs> right aside of here. 
All right, the next thing we're gonna tip in is a tag. So I have this tag that I put together, and of course you could put a tag into a pocket or into a tuck spot or something like that, or even just clip it onto your journal if you wanted to, but tags also make great tip-ins. So I wanted to just mention something before I do this tip-in. Um, this page in my journal here has kind of a, a flap that's folded over. I like to kind of add flaps because then I can make pockets or you know tuck something in here or something like that. So you could kind Kind of use this as a tip-in that's already attached so I mean it's basically attached there you could take your tag and you could glue it staple it sew it right onto this flap and that creates a tip-in itself now I'm not going to do that but I just wanted to mention that because that is something else that you could try to do all right we're going to put this tag in using a fabric hinge. So we just did a paper hinge and I kind of wanted to show you a fabric hinge as well because they can be just as fun and you can use up lots of scraps using them for hinges. So this is just a scrap piece of paper. I'm sorry, it's not paper, it's fabric. <laughs> this is a scrap piece of fabric from a swatch book from um, a fabric store. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut it with my pinking shears, hopefully. So my pinking shears aren't the best and I kind of have to do little bits at a time because the, the tops of my pinking shears are not that um, sharp. I'm gonna go maybe just a little bit more to make sure I have enough. And this fabric hinge is not going to be as big as the tag, so going to be a little bit shorter than the tag. Get that out, out of the way there. And once again, you have to consider when you're using this type of technique that it may cover up something. So, you know, depending on how you put the hinge on, you may be covering up, you know, part of your design or something like that. Hinges can go two ways. Now you saw how I put the, it was kind of like a hidden hinge that we had done over here. So you can't see the hinge on the outside. You can just see it on the inside. Um, you can do the same thing with this. So I could put one edge of the fabric down here and then glue it to the paper on this side, making it a hidden hinge. But you can also do it if you would like to hinge it on the outside. So I think I'm gonna do that this time just to kind of show you the options that you have. So I'm always gonna try to add the fabric to the, or I'm sorry, the glue to the shorter side or the shorter side of my tip-in. So the fabric is shorter, obviously. So I'm gonna use that here. Now um, you can use washi tape for these kinds of things, all, you know, these things that I was showing you. So I did one with washi tape with a large, you know, full size piece of scrapbook paper because it's easy to make sure the tape is all wrapped around the paper. Um, you can do that when your tip-in and your page are different sizes. It's just a little trickier. So I like to use something like fabric or paper as a hinge instead of washi tape for tip-ins that don't match in size because they're easier to make sure they're, you know, put together okay. So if I was using washi tape, I'd have to figure out, okay, you know, where do I stop the washi tape? Um, you know, I could do it smaller like that, but once again, with washi tape, I feel like the adhesive isn't great. You would definitely want to add some extra adhesive on there to be sure something, you know, doesn't come apart. So this is one side. I'm, I am going to let this glue sit up a little bit or set up a little bit, I should say, before we do the other side. Um, but once that's, once that's set up, all we're going to do is add... Maybe I can do it now. It's pretty good. This doesn't set up as fast as some of my other glues, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do it without messing it up. So now I'm just, once again, adding glue to the other side of my piece of fabric that's gonna be my hinge. And because this is an outside hinge, it's gonna go on the outside of the paper. And then I'm just gonna fold this over trying to make sure the tag and the paper are, the edge of the paper are pretty close to aligned. But you might want this to be just a little bit loose because then when you fold it open, you have, you know, a nice 
width in there. So let's let this dry for a second before I flip it open too many more times and we'll take a look at this one as well. Okay, my fabric hinge is all dry. And so my tag tip in is all set here. And I love how it adds just a little bit to the page on the other side. I think that adds some interest. And then you can flip it open and flip it back. And because this tag has a little topper up here, it sticks out up of the top of the journal, which I love too. So that is using a tag and a fabric hinge. All right, next up, we're gonna be using cards, some kind of card. <laughs> so you could use a postcard, a time card, an index card, or a library card, which is what I'm gonna be using uh, today. So all this kind of works the same way, um, but these are just different types of ephemera. If you have them lying around, you can use to make fun tippins. Now this one, I could once again do it on the edge like this, but since I've done a couple of different places in here, I thought it would be fun to do one at the top. So I think I'm gonna kind of center this in the page or maybe even put it over here so that it kind of hides hides this pretty pink flower here because then when you flip it up, it'll sort of be a little surprise that you see there. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one. We're going to do a top tip in. Now, the technique I'm going to use is actually, I'm going to use some eyelets. So I'm gonna try to pick these up there, the small ones, which we'll have to see, um, hopefully they will do what I'm thinking they will do. I'm gonna use an eyelet, and then I'm also gonna use some very thin ribbon, but you could use twine or um, some kind of heavy thread or something like that for this as well. So these are the eyelets I'm going to use, and I'm going to put two eyelets into each um, paper. Now, to do that, I'm gonna use this eyelet setter which is a crocodile, and it's like the, I think it's the mini one maybe, I don't know. But I'm gonna use this one to do it. Now I'm not gonna, just to keep this video in <laughs> good time so that it doesn't go on forever and ever, I am not gonna kind of walk you through how I'm setting the eyelets. Um, I will tell you that I'm going to put, when I punch the holes, I'm gonna punch them together. So I think I want, I'm gonna grab my pencil real quick just to get an idea of where I want my holes. I don't wanna cover up my words here if I don't have to. So I'm gonna to try to put an eyelet in this corner and in this corner like that. So I hope that they're relatively even or something like that so that they kind of go together. But once I have them where I want them, I'm going to punch the holes for the eyelets together. So you use this crocodile to punch the holes and that's the small side. So I'm gonna come in here and punch my holes right over there, there. And then I'll take them apart and I'll set an eyelet one, two, three, four in each of these papers. So if you have questions about this, you can ask me in the comments below, or if you would like a tutorial, you can let me know that too and we can go through that. But since that's not the focus of this, I'd rather just do the tip in for you right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch these holes and get these eyelets set so that you can see what we're working with here. All right, my eyelets are in and I did accidentally Miss punch on the one side. So I got really close to the edge, but I was able to just kind of cover it up. So um, I, whatever happened, I couldn't see where the, the hole was that I had drawn or the dot was that I had drawn, but it's gonna work out just fine. Now these eyelets, I'm not crazy about them because you can see they kind of smash on the back side. So I did take a little hammer and kind of tried to smooth them out a little bit, but, um, I don't think that this is something, you know, that I'll be using these in the future or in a journal that, you know, I might want to sell or something. But I do like this technique and I think it would be fun to use this in a journal that I was selling. So, so now I have my library card here and I have my four holes and my eyelets all ready to go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my ribbon. So you can see this is a very thin ribbon. Obviously, if your eyelets were bigger, you might be able to use something else here. Um, and now I don't wanna tie this real tight because um, you wanna give the paper room to flip open. So I'm trying to decide, I didn't cut them long enough to make bows, but I am just gonna maybe tie a little double knot here, but I'm giving it lots of space. And we'll cut off some of those ends maybe as we go here. 
okay and then i'm going to do the same thing on the other side so you could certainly leave this with one eyelet or i should say two eyelets one on each paper if you wanted to but this is fun and um, i'm not sure i'd do more than two just because it might be harder to flip if there's more holes that have to sort of work um, together so i'm just gonna leave that like that so you can see here now we have our paper all together and my flip will go like this now I, like i said i left lots of room i think i might try to retie these with a little bit less room i think i kind of over compensated for what i wanted to happen here so let me see if I can get these untied and I'm gonna retie them with maybe just a, you know, since these papers are very thin, I think I could probably have my knot, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch above the eyelet. So let me retie them and see if, see if that will work a little bit. You know, it's a little, I mean, it works just fine for sure. It's just a little bit loose. So let's tighten it up and see how that looks. Okay, I have them retied and I like this much better. So now my knots are just maybe, a, like I said, a quarter of an inch above the eyelet there, making a much smaller loop, but still leaving plenty of room for this to flip up. So you can see it still has some give here, but it's a little bit closer, which I like a lot better. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim these ends down, which, you know, I'm just gonna decide, I don't know, where they look good here. Give them a little angled trim because once again, this will be fun to have something that sticks up when the journal is closed. I like, you know, kind of having that popping out there. So that I think that's really fun. So there you go. This is an index, or I'm sorry, a library card and a top flip, a top tip in there. And I love the way that this just kind of hides part of the page that you're working on there. All right, last one. We're going to do a fabric tip in this time. So instead of paper or ephemera or something like that, we're going to use fabric as a tip in. And I love using fabric as a tip in. I think they're they're so much fun and they cover the page so nicely. And sometimes they're a little bit thick, so they may add a little bit of bulk, you know, to your pages. You could obviously use some thinner fabric if you wanted to so this one is very thin it wouldn't add much to your um to your page at all but i was talking before about those um swatch book um, fabrics and this is one of those and i like to use these because they often have this paper glued to the top and that gives it a nice sturdy place to do your tip-in. So the technique I'm gonna use for this tip-in is sewing. So this is a very simple tip-in. I'm going to put it at the top of a page. I'm gonna sew at the top of the fabric and it's gonna create a top tip-in like this. And I, once again, I love this for covering up a page that maybe isn't so pretty. Um, you could put it on a book page or you could put it on something else that maybe you know just doesn't have a lot of, you know, luster to it and it also obviously can add pattern can add texture depending on what fabric you're using so these are a lot of fun so now for doing a sewn tip in um they're definitely easier to do when the book has not been bound yet so in my idea book i actually have several signatures that are just attached with um elastic just for this purpose so i can kind of pull them out and I can add to this signature or whatever as if I haven't bound it into the book yet. So if you would like to know how to make this idea book, I think I, I'm gonna link it in the description down below so that if you'd like to make something like this, you can do that. But I like having this idea book with some signatures with elastics because then I can take it out and work in them separately. So I want to put this on this page right here. And so all I'm gonna do is take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna add a little bit of stitching right to the top here. Nothing fancy. Um, it is gonna show up on the other side, so you need to be aware of that, but you could certainly cover that up with something if you didn't want it that way. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll come back so you can see what that looks like. All right, you can see here, I just did a plain straight stitch and I did it 
in a straight line. So you could do this as messy stitching, kind of, you know, wobbly all around. You could do a zigzag stitch for some decoration or even some um, pattern stitches if you have a sewing machine that does that kind of thing. Now, <laughs> I must have been holding this a little bit crooked because you can see that it sticks out a little bit on the side, but certainly I don't mind about that. And that might be even fun if you had a fabric that looked nice on both sides like this one does, you could even set it off to the side to stick out a little bit if you wanted it to as well. So then when I would be ready, I would put my signature back together and this tip in would be all ready to go to get sewn into my book. All right, there you have it, friends. Six different tip-ins with six different techniques. And remember, you can mix and match these. You can do tags with sewing. You can do the envelope with a hinge. You can do so many different things. So I hope that you'll give these a try. I hope that you have some fun with them. And as you start working on them, I am sure that you will come up with different techniques and even different types of tip-ins to do. So you're only limited by your imagination. I hope that this has inspired you. I hope that you can go get creative with some tip-ins in your journals. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you in the next video, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.